Let's talk about Lawrence Kohlberg's moral developmental stages. I really like this topic because morality is an issue that we tend to have very little insight about. We tend to consider ourselves more moral than we actually are. It's a lot more situational than we'd like to think. And also we have this sort of intuition that we've always had our morality. And this is absolutely not true. Morality does not exist in nature. It is a human construct and it is learned behavior. Human infants have no sense of morality at all. They cry and scream at all hours of the day and night with complete disregard for how their behavior might affect other people. Also, there's research on feral children. And feral children are kids who were raised without human contact, oftentimes in very terrible situations of neglect where they've been locked away. And what the research shows is that these poor children have three things in common. They don't walk on two legs, they don't talk, and they don't demonstrate any sense of morality at all. So we learn morality. Kohlberg divides moral development up into three stages, the pre-conventional stage, the conventional stage, and the post-conventional stage. So pre-conventional stage, the earliest part of human development is when a child has moved out of infancy and caregivers and the environment start to modify the child's behavior really to socialize the child. At this earliest stage, the child doesn't care what's right and what's wrong. The child only cares if they're gonna be punished or rewarded for a behavior. Basically, the child's attitude is what's in it for me. Now, my dog operates at the pre-conventional moral developmental level. He knows not to get into the trash because he knows he'll be punished if I see him get into the trash. Now. My dog doesn't care if getting into the trash is moral or not. My dog cares, am I gonna get in trouble? Am I gonna get rewarded? So as long as I'm watching my dog, he'll never go into the trash because he knows that that will result in punishment for him. But if I'm not around, I guarantee you, he will still get into the trash. Children at this moral stage act exactly like that. If they think they're gonna get rewarded, they're likely to increase a behavior. And if they think they're gonna be punished, they're likely to decrease a behavior. Now there are human adults who have never moved beyond the pre-conventional level of development. We call them sociopaths or psychopaths. They continue to operate out of what's in it for me. The psychological diagnosis is called antisocial personality disorder and it's characterized by no sense of conscience. These folks behave in ways that they get what they want and they really have complete disregard for whether or not other people are harmed in the process. Whatever, I'll do what I want. A lot of these folks end up in prison and others end up in politics. Kohlberg's second stage is the conventional stage and believe it or not, the vast majority of human beings never move beyond this second level of moral development. He calls it the good boy, good girl stage. So kids growing up and has learned that some behaviors will result in punishment, some will result in rewards, but they become very, very interested in pleasing authority figures, their teachers, their caregivers, and as adults, uh, police officers, judges, and that kind of stuff. Basically, at this stage, people want to be good. They want to be seen as good and they want authority figures to approve of them. So they try very hard to be good boys and girls and they know how to be good because society has taught them the rules for being good. They learn how to be good from their caregivers, from their religious leaders, from the laws of the land. And as long as they remain in their environment of origin, they get along pretty well. And as I said, very few people move beyond this. If you ask someone at the conventional level why it's wrong to steal, their rationale will be because it's against the law or because it says so in the Bible or because that's what bad people do. Can you think of why having most of humanity at the conventional level of morality could present some problems? If you lived in the South, in the United States, prior to the Civil War, and you were a white person, your parents, the laws of the land, and your minister, in fact, 
everyone in your culture would have told you that slavery was okay. Slavery had been around for thousands of years. The Bible certainly tells uh, folks how to care for slaves, but it never says that slavery is bad. So in an environment where everyone tells you that slavery is okay, how in the world would you know that it's not okay? To know this, you would have to move to the post-conventional level. In the post-conventional stage of moral development, you take what you've learned about morality from your culture and you compare it to some universal litmuses. And those are things like fairness and the golden rule, you know, do unto others. In other words, pretty much empathy. What I want this done to me or someone I love. And the third one is the question, is harm done? So if you lived in the South and you were white in the early 1800s, you could say, all right, is slavery fair? Obviously slavery is not fair, so no. You could ask the question, would I want to be treated like a slave or would I want someone I love to be a slave? And the answer is of course, no, no one would want that. And third, is harm done? Well, obviously harm is done. No matter where you were raised, no matter when you were raised, you could determine that slavery is a bad thing. I grew up in a plantation family down on the Sea Islands of South Carolina. And my family was, you know, good people. They had a lot of good traits. They were pretty honest and hardworking and they cared for each other. But they were also uh, racist and homophobic. So had I not gone through the painstaking work of going through my own moral code and using these universal litmuses to determine right from wrong, I could have easily wound up with some very harmful moral beliefs. In his research, Kohlberg told his subjects a story, the story of Heinz. Heinz's wife was terminally ill and had not very long to live. But there was a pharmacist who had invented a cure for her rare disease. It was a single pill and the pill would instantly cure her. However, the pill cost $10,000. So Heinz goes to the pharmacist and begs him for the pill and the pharmacist says, you can have a pill, but it costs $10,000. And Heinz doesn't have $10,000. So he goes to the bank and he goes to his family and his friends and tries to scrounge up the money. And he is able to come up with $5,000. So he goes back to the pharmacist and he says, man, all I've been able to come up with is, is $5,000. Will you take that instead of 10,000 for the pill? And the pharmacist says, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, Took a long time for research and development on this pill, and the price is $10,000, I'm sorry. That night, Heinz breaks into the pharmacy, steals the pill, gives it to his wife, and saves her life. Now, Kohlberg asks his subjects, did Heinz do the right thing, and why? For Kohlberg, the reason for the answer is more important than the answer itself. So let's look at stage one pre-conventional stage. Did Heinz do the right thing? The subject says, yes, he did the right thing because he didn't get caught. Or no, he did the wrong thing because he might end up going to jail if they catch him. So in the pre-conventional stage, the answer only has to do with, is Heinz gonna get in trouble or not? So it's all about self-interest. That's a pre-conventional stage. Okay, conventional stage. Did Heinz do the right thing? No, he did the wrong thing. Stealing is against the law. The Bible says don't steal. My parents say don't steal. Heinz did the wrong thing. Or also from the conventional level, Heinz did the right thing. He did the right thing because Heinz was the man of the house and part of his duty as a good husband is to protect and care for his wife. These are conventional rationales. Stage three post-conventional. Did Heinz do the right thing? Yes, he did the right thing because a human life is of greater value than money. More harm is done by not stealing the pill. Heinz did the wrong thing because 
society couldn't function if everyone just stole whatever they needed. In other words, there's greater harm to society if everyone is stealing from each other than if one person loses a life. In fact, everyone stealing could result in more lives being lost.